So without any further ado, I'm going to introduce Professor Brian Leonard uh, from the University of uh, Ireland at Galway. And he's going to talk to us about inflammation and kynurene metabolites as a cause of neuroprogression in depression. Uh, all speakers have been asked to kindly limit their presentation to 15 minutes, allowing for about five minutes for questions and answers. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for uh, coming at this ghastly hour in this miserable morning. I'm really looking at um, what could be the long-term consequences of chronic inflammation in patients suffering from major depression. And there's a lot of interest, I think, just recently in the possible link uh, between chronic major depression and the onset of dementia, particularly Alzheimer's disease. So I want to sort of um, really look, explore that possibility and maybe look at some of the possible biochemical uh, links which could be relevant. So what's the evidence, first of all? Well, first of all, there's a lot of evidence now suggesting that in chronic major depression, um, there is, in fact, an increase in inflammatory in cytokines and inflammatory mediators. And particularly in the brain, it appears that uh, these, um, these inflammatory uh, molecules are associated very much with an increase for the activation of the microglia, which we've known for a long time does occur in patients with major depression. And that's a major source, in fact, of many of these inflammatory uh, cytokines and other mediators. And in addition to that, it's associated with an increase in the activity of the glutamatergic system, which, of course, long-term and in excess can lead to neuronal damage. So I want to pursue that a little bit, a little bit further. Uh, first of all, the evidence that these mediators are increased in depression, and there's now a lot of literature on this, um, particularly uh, studies in blood, plasma, and so forth. So most of these studies are in plasma, um, and you can see here there's a, a very rich uh, response and inflammatory basis that we do find in patients suffering. Uh, from uh, major depressive disorder. Um, in addition, uh, even in the cerebral spinal fluid now, there's increasing evidence that the pro inflammatory cytokines are increased. And indeed, if I've not shown here, but in post mortem material again, uh, there's evidence from the post mortem brain, suicide brain of patients suffering from depression that the pro inflammatory cytokines. Are increased. So it would appear that there is some sort of association between the increased inflammation and, in fact, the pathophysiology of major, uh, major depression. Um, now, <clears throat> how is that expressed? And particularly, coming around to the main hypothesis, that there's some sort of link between these changes, chronic long term changes, and the integrity uh, of the uh, of the neurons. So, what's the actual evidence? Well, I think um, there are many ways of looking at this, but we've been particularly interested now in a few years in the so-called tryptophan kinase pathway, and uh, this is a pathway um, whereby tryptophan, brain tryptophan in particular, is shunted through and metabolized to which is then further broken down um, in the brain to one of two end products, one of which is neurodegenerative, chimeric acid, the other is neuroprotective, chimeric acid. And so there's a, um, what we think happens in depression is it's a neurodegenerative pathway which in fact is increased. Now, these pathways are switched on um, via two very important enzymes. Widely distributed, we have the indolamine dioxygenase in many peripheral tissues and also in the brain. We also have in the liver a very important tryptophan uh, dioxygenase, 
The difference between them is that tryptophan dioxinase is activated by cortisol. Again, well established in chronic major depression, in many, many cases, the majority probably, there's an increase in cortisol, which is driving then tryptophan uh, dioxinase and further increasing the metabolism of tryptophan down the kynurenine pathway. With the inflammation, however, the inflammatory cytokines activate indolamine dioxinase, which has the same effect. And so you see in the two sort of classical biochemical changes that occur in major depression, we have end products which activate uh, the um, tryptophan kynurenine pathway. So what are the consequences? Well, this just summarizes a lot of data uh, which has been published over the last 10 to 15 years, showing quite clearly that, um, as shown here, that pro-inflammatory cytokines like interferon gamma activate the key enzyme indolating dioxinase and also the monooxygenase, which converts kynurenine through to 3-hydroxykynurenine and then down to the neurodegenerative component quinolinic acid, which activates the n methyl d aspartate receptors of glutamate. And so you can see how that pathway, in particular, is activated both by pro-inflammatory cytokines, by stress, inflammation, depression, and by the increase in cortisol. Conversely, the other neuroprotective pathway leading to kynurenic acid is proportionately decreased. So there's an imbalance between the neurodegenerative and neuroprotective pathways in major depression. And um, the consequences of that is that with particularly the accumulation of quinolinic acid, because this pathway is enhanced, what one finds is that the um, astrocytes in particular are in fact killed. So you have a decrease in astrocyte function, an increase in microglia function, um, which is part of the activation process following inflammation, and an increase in that pathway. Now you'll notice here a nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide is an end product of quinolinic acid. And under normal physiological conditions, this is a major source of NAD in the brain. And so one can see the importance of that particular pathway under normal circumstances. But as I will show you, when we're dealing with an excessive amount of glutamate, that particular aspect means that the NAD level decreases. And there are many reasons for that, which I'll briefly touch on. So. <clears throat> We know how, um, what's the evidence for this, that it actually occurs and occurs commonly? Well, now there's a lot of clinical evidence, and I'm going to be emphasizing the clinical evidence in this talk um, uh, uh, of the, uh, uh, the kynurenine pathway being important. Well, over uh, 30 studies now have been published over the last few years, all showing basically the same thing in major depression. And one can see also how, in fact, biochemically, uh, this process works. So there's an activation then of the neurodegenerative pathway associated with inflammation and an increase in the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis in major depression. Surveying the evidence then, what, I, what I've told you is that there's the activation of the microglia, um, and an increase in the inflammatory mediators and excessive glutamate, which actually causes uh, the damage. Uh, so what's actually the evidence? And this is some post-mortem evidence um, from a group of um, depressed suicides. And um, what you can see here, on the one hand, is quinolinic acid staining, high power, and also, what you'll see is the quinolinic acid stain is associated very much with the activated microglia. So we have evidence 
both from the brain, but also trypsin breakdown is increased, the bone growth is controlled. Uh, here you've got the ratio of the neurodegenerative to the neuroprotective pathway, and you can see again that's increased in the depressed patients, um, and showing basically uh, here a decrease in the neuroprotective pathway. So you can actually measure these things in both end products in the blood. It's happening in the periphery, it's happening in the brain. Right, so um, that's basically the summary. Um, and it's associated not only with the, uh, the changes in the glutamate activity and the increase in the, um, the neurodegenerative components, but also a decrease in serotonin synthesis for the simple reason you haven't got enough tricks on going through that pathway. Um, that basically summarizes what I showed you before, um, but I just want to point out one important thing, and that is this component here, where we've got nicotine and uh, nucleotide, which is normally functioning in, uh, of course, to the electron transport system uh, within, within the brain, and then driving energy metabolism uh, within the brain. Also associated is the insulin um, desensitization, which has been well established in many, many studies uh, showing in, 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 that there's a decrease in insulin function as well. So less glucose gets into the brain to be metabolized. Um, basically, this shows you what would be a normal physiological condition with criminally acid giving rise to NAD. Um, however, in the case of uh, where you've got an increase in the pro inflammatory cytokines, an increase in criminally acid under those circumstances, that there is in fact a decrease in the synthesis of NAD. Now, there's also some of the cofactors are also reduced in these, under these conditions too, so you've got far less than of NAD being produced. So that's a sort of a summary um, from that point of view, and the, the, it's now well established that the and there are many components of this pathway now which seem to be contributing basically um, to the a neurotoxic um, situation, particularly within the brain, affecting, uh, affecting the uh, neurons. So evidence then, well there's a lot of evidence here um, of neurodegeneration occurring. The, the brain is a major patient with major depressant. Um, this is just a few of the T ones, but there are many, many other studies, both before and since, all showing basically the same, uh, the same thing. Um, <coughs> now I'll go into uh, magnetic resonance spectroscopy, showing that's an increase in glutamate as well under these conditions, again bringing it together, and uh, also explaining why uh, the glutamate is particularly neurotoxic. Uh, under these conditions. And the major point, I think, of my talk is here, uh, and that is that um, there's been a lot of epidemiological evidence uh, in the past showing a connection between chronic major depression and um, Alzheimer's disease in particular. There are many studies showing this. Um, and um, what, what uh, we've been trying to do is to pinpoint how those changes uh, might, uh, might in fact occur. And this just sort of summarizes some of the main biochemical events, many of them linked to the activation um, of the uh, tryptophan uh, tannin pathway. So this really brings it all together, uh, suggesting that now, as a consequence of, of all these disparate changes which occur in chronic major depression, it associated very much with the accelerated uh, aging, uh, neurodegenerative changes in particular in the um, uh, affecting the neurons, leading uh, to an increase in dementia um, in these patients. And um, <clears throat> that just summarizes the three main points. 
We import some chronic major inflammation, we import some stress, and how that activates the neurodegenerative uh, pathway, and the metabolic changes, which occur detrimentally as a consequence of the activation of that pathway, and indeed other changes which occur concurrently uh, in the brain of the uh, this patient. So, thank you very much for your attention. I'd like to uh, bring to your attention a, a colleague of mine, um, Dr. Amy Milt, who in fact has done a lot of the work on the uh, tryptophan timering path on the end depression, showing um, clinically these uh, links, which I can summarize here. So, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Brian, we have a couple of minutes for a couple of questions. I think a uh, um, related question. What proportion of depressed patients do you think are affected by these changes, inflammatory changes? They can be depressed population. Yeah. Well, I think, you see, I should um, cover my remarks by saying that actually all of these changes have been uh, involved in patients with chronic major depression. We know very, very little, I mean, you know, what is depression? I mean, it covers a plethora of probably different syndromes and so forth. And we don't know a lot about, you know, minor depression, depression associated with major disorder, anxiety disorders, etc., etc., etc. So these studies were very much um, with a more serious end of the depressive spectrum, many of them hospitalized and so forth, and many of them uh, therapy-resistant patients. So it's an, an extreme edge. Uh, so I think the next thing is to look at subgroups in more, in more detail and see if there's some sort of gradation. I should say that, of course, these inflammatory changes occur in bipolar disorder, in schizophrenia, um, in some of the anxiety disorders, similarly. And there is certainly some evidence in the case of schizophrenia that that pathway is also accentuated the tryptophan chimeric pathway. So it may be a much more general phenomenon um, than we originally thought of, you know, when we were dealing with depressed patients to begin with, all associated with an increase in inflammatory changes. So I think that you know, we're still in the early, early days, um, and it's just really, if you like, a proof of concept that we need to now go further and see how general this is and what the real consequences are across all areas of the notion. So I think you know, we need more research. And do you think that we can uh, currently identify these patients by any biomarker? Well, that's a, that's a very interesting uh, question. That's what we were hope we are hoping and we're hoping. And in fact, the um, uh, EC seven framework program uh, pushed uh, a lot of money into um, you know, a group. We had a big group looking, in fact, at markers and trying to define markers. Yes, we're we're hopeful. The trouble is, of course. It's not easy to measure these markers. That's that's the problem. So in theory, yes, these these, these could in fact be really relevant markers. And I know um, Andros, in I'm not, we probably won't be talking about it today, but um, in fact there is evidence of you know markers from the tryptophan timeline pathway which are very much associated with major depression as you know, possible indicators. Um, but you're not presenting that data today, are you? Oh, um, no, we the data. no, I'm not trying to gather in there. So that's the way we're going. And I think it's a long, it's a long shot for that. It's worth looking at. Okay. Thank you, Brian.